What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets. Hope everybody's doing excellent and having a great summer. The Jets took the field today for their first practice of training camp, and there's plenty of news and notes out there. First off, shout out to Primetime, man, who covered that practice, had a couple of videos go viral, which is completely cool. So make sure you follow him on social media and follow us, too, of course. But uh, also, I guess the first surprise of camp is Aaron Rodgers. The guy missed two full days of mandatory minicamp. Two full days. And was absolutely dealing today. Talk about a remarkable athlete, right? I mean, that's just, I mean, that's, look at what he's doing right now, right? So uh, I guess the first surprise for me is hearing about the new level of accountability on offense where pre-snap penalties now result in you being taken off the field. The Jets are one of the most penalized team last year in the NFL. And finally, they're, they're committed to cleaning things up. And I think that's awesome, man. Set that standard now. Make it your standard going throughout the preseason and everything else. And hopefully you can clean a lot of things up. Second thing is the play of Alan Lazard, where he was a guy that last year was an, a colossal disappointment, where he got the big contract and he ended the season being inactive. And even in OTAs, he was struggling with a lot of drop passes. And it seems like he's really trying to find himself and kind of you know, finding his way back and making plays again, which is great. Hopefully it continues. You got to figure that, you know, he's got to have a chip on his shoulder where it's like he knows everybody's writing him off. The media, the fans. I'm sure some teammates looking at him like, dude, this guy's just, he just mailed it in. So him bouncing back would be great. You figure Aaron Rodgers is probably a mentor to him and probably really closely and kind of guiding him back. Probably similar to last year at Mekhi Beckton where Rodgers really kind of coerced him and kind of, you know, let him let him a little bit. And if that happens with Lazard, it's great because the Jets desperately need a quality veteran receiver at this point because they have a lot of young receivers that are still trying to find their way. And I think Gibson got banged up today, but you got Brownlee, you know, Corley, while he's still a rookie, Irv Charles. So if Lazard can contribute, especially while Mike Williams is out, that could pay big dividends. Another guy is Max Mitchell. Right now, AVT and Morgan Moses aren't practicing. And according to every report, Max Mitchell's stepping it up. And that's, a, dude, that's what you want to see because you need depth behind these starters. You don't want to have any kind of, a guy misses a game or two and there's an enormous drop-off. Tyron Smith is as advertised, looks dominant, looks physical, an excellent mentor. And I don't think the skill was ever a, question, ever a question with him. It's more about keeping him healthy and keeping him on the field. But the one thing you got to love is hearing about Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses are staying at the practice and helping all these young guys. That's going to pay an enormous dividends for uh, Olu, Carter Ward, and everybody else. Um, at the running back position, Tariq Cohen turning some heads where 28 years old. He can kind of fit that role with a veteran running back in the room, but he's showing explosiveness, which would be great for the running back position. More importantly, even in the return game on special teams. So Cohen doing well is just, that's a blessing because you're, you have a lot of really young running backs there that can learn a lot from him. So that'll do uh, pay some dividends. Um, on defense, Tack McKinley was a name that came out of nowhere where the defensive line, you have, you know, Reddick is holding out. You have guys trying to find their way. And McKinley, a former, former first-round pick, apparently had like three sacks today. It was very explosive and dominant. So the more competition on the defensive line, the better. So that's welcome news. Chuck Clark returned. And I think it's just, I think we're so excited to see the news. But these are all players that kind of caught us off guard. Like, well, I don't really think about Tack McKinley as, you know, he kind of figured to try out, not expecting much. But for him to make a statement this early on is phenomenal. Uh, other than that, I think the one disappointing thing is the way this Reddick thing is playing out, where I think they put him on, a, they put him on what, the, the did not show up list or some whatever the hell it is, where when you put him on that list, it's like he's getting fined $50,000 a day. And that kind of means he's not, he's not going to show up anytime soon. And the longer this plays out, the more you worry about him learning the defense, more importantly, learning about will he be in football shape. And you always worry about those injuries where it's the hamstring, the quad, where football shape is, you know, you can be in gym shape. Football shape is so much different. And you worry about how his conditioning is and what, what level of conditioning he'll be in when he comes into camp. So, Quick video, kind of recapping the day. Exciting times. I mean, this is what we've all been waiting for, man. It's like you, football's back. You see a lot of good things. The most important thing is you want to see progress and seeing this team stay healthy. Talk to you guys later.